allow me to ask you few simple questions. What will you choose out of the two options? $100 today or $100 after one year? I guess the answer is pretty obvious. You will choose $100 today, right? How about $100 today and $150 after one year? I'm sure now you are thinking of taking $150 after one year. But what about $100 today and $105 after one year? Maybe now you are scratching your head as both options look equally good. The reason could be that you can safely take $100 today and earn 5% by putting it in the bank, thereby making $105, right? So both options are pretty much the same, right? Congratulations, you just found the time value of money and that is the increase in value by 5%. So if there is one topic that is most important in finance, then this is it. Time value of money is the foundation on which the world of finance is built. And today we'll discuss this concept of time value of money in the most simple way. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj Vaidhi from wallstreetmojo.com, the home to most authentic information on finance and accounting. Let's get started. Time value of money concept is divided into two parts. The first one is future value and the second one is present value. Okay, these are the two core concepts within time value of money. So let's discuss each one of them. So let's start with future value first. So what do you mean by future value? Future value is simple. What, whatever is written future value, that's what it means. So say for example, if you have $1000 in your hand, right? and you make an investment and the rate of return is say 10%. So what will be its value after let's say one year, two years and three years and so on and so forth. That's called as the future value. It's as simple as this. So let's look at the calculations of, you know, how much will be the value of your investment, let's say for thousand dollars which you make and the rate of return that is expected is 10%. So what will be its value after year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. So let's do that. So year one. So if you look at $1,000, your $1,000 should grow by another 10% over and above the principal amount that is $1,000, right? So 10% of 1,000 is $100, right? So the total amount should be 1,000 plus 100, that is 1,100. So in Excel, what we do is we write it in a very basic and an easy format. So that is, we'll link this up to $1,000 and we multiply this and we increase this number, the original base with one plus and the rate of return that is 10%. So what this does is it increases the original amount that is the principal amount by 1.1, right? So what we get is 1100 as the answer correct so this is the year one the future value of your thousand dollars investment but what about let's say year two what will be its value after two years the value after two years will be that it has grown from thousand to one thousand one hundred in year one and another ten percent it will grow from year one to year two so the formula will be very simple Instead of now $1,000, it will be $1,100 and then I need to increase this base by another 1.1 times. So this is, instead of writing 10%, I'll have to link it. So this will become 1210. So what will be the value at the end of third year? The value at the end of third year will be whatever is the value at the end of second year and you again increase it by 1.1. So that is what we will get as 1331. So this process of, you know, finding this present value and we are kind of increasing this every time by 10% year over year, this process is called as compounding. Okay. Remember this, this is very important. This is a process of compounding. We are increasing it year over year by 10%. Okay. Another thing to uh, look at in while we discuss future value is that the formula which I have written here 
essentially takes let's say for year two it takes for the values from year one for year three it takes the value from year two there's another way in which we can express this formula and that's what we are going to discuss it now so the formula for year two value can be expressed like this this will be thousand dollars multiplied by one plus ten percent so what is this this is essentially the year one value remember this is thousand dollars is the initial investment you're making it grow by another ten percent so this is the year one value right now for year two you have to multiply this again by 1.1 right so that's what i am going to do one plus ten percent that is 1.1 okay so primarily what's happening is this is coming twice right so when i enter it this comes out to be one two one zero so it's essentially the same thing right now but instead of you know multiplying this twice you know instead of that i can write it in a much simpler way that is to the power of two is it fine this one will be the value after year one and after that there is a to the power of two so how do you think the formula will look like for year three i guess uh, it should be fairly simple let me just copy and paste this formula and uh, instead of two here obviously this will be three because we are talking about the value at the end of year three and this is one three three one okay so for the sake of simplicity and display let me just uh, you know display the formula for you so for year one it is like this for year two the formula looks like this and for year three the formula looks like this so it's pretty straightforward as you can see 1 plus e5 to the power of 1 1 plus e5 to the power of 2 1 plus e5 to the power of 3 so remember that compounding of 10 percent is happening like this over year one year two year three and so on and so forth so that's how the formula looks like so the formula that we discussed for future value it can be mathematically written as something like this so future value is nothing but your initial investment that is c0 and multiplied by one plus r to the power of n so n is the year okay so it will come as one for year one two for year two three for year three and so on and so forth r is nothing but the rate of return okay so the formula looks fairly simple and this is how your future value can get calculated now let us look at the second most important concept in time value of money and that is present value okay so how do we understand present value think of it like this think of how much amount should you invest today okay how much amount should you invest today to earn say for example eleven hundred dollars at the end of year one okay get it how much amount should you invest today in order to earn eleven hundred dollars at the end of year one obviously this amount that you invest today will be different from eleven hundred and i want to understand what that amount will be okay so that's called as present value and how do you calculate present value i'll, I'll discuss the formula as well right now okay so let me write this year one let's say eleven hundred dollars and let's now discuss the formula so in order to find the present value what we need to do is to take the value which you want at the end of first year and then divide it by one plus your rate of return right that is 10 percent okay so you will get one thousand dollars so carefully look at this formula here in this case you're dividing it by one plus your rate of return okay and if you look at the compounding part of it what did we do we basically were multiplying the initial amount by this one plus this rate of return okay so on one side this is called as compounding on the other side this is essentially discounting okay you're discounting it to present value and how do you discount you discount by dividing it by one plus your rate of return so this is how you calculate the present value of cash flow that is generated at the end of first year okay so let me write this as at the end of first year but let's say what is the present value for certain cash flow that you generate at the end of second year what will be its present value okay so let's look at that formula so in this case uh, let me take the same example year two 
let's say this is 1 2 1 0 so formula will pretty much remain the same in this case again you will divide this 1 2 1 0 by 1 plus your discount rate that is rate of return that is 10 percent and to the power of two because this cash flow happens at the end of second year so you have to discount it twice right so you will get thousand dollars again and how about a certain cash flow that happens at the end of third year and you want to calculate the present value so let's take the same example year three let's say you get one three three one so we know the answer but we just are figuring out the formula here okay so here this will be 1331 divided by 1 plus your discount rate to the power of 3 correct so this is how you calculate the present value and let me just display the formula for you so that uh, you know you can also understand how the formula goes from one year two years and three years and onwards okay so for the first year second year and third year so the only difference you can see is with the discount rates right one plus e5 to the power of two for the second year one plus e5 to the power of three for the third year okay so and so on and so forth so this is how you know you can calculate the present value and remember most important this is also called as discounting so on one side when we were talking about future value we were compounding the value got increased with each year here when we are calculating the present value the value is discounted okay and it is discounted at the rate of return or the discount rate that we are using okay the same thing can be expressed by way of a formula right and uh, as we saw in the future value this is the same similar kind of a formula here the formula is pretty simple present value is equal to c this is the cash flows okay so let's say for the nth year if this is the first year this will be c1 divided by 1 plus r to the power of 1 what is r r is the discount rate okay so likewise let's say if this was the third year so cash flow in the third year divided by 1 plus r to the power of 3 i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.